Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Our Wyoming Life. Coming up on Our Wyoming Life. Necessity is the mother of invention, and gates are a pain in the ass. And when you don't want to go through, you go over. Then, we take a look at five things you might not know or want to know about cows. Wrap things up this week with our first viewer Q&A. So there's this old joke, and it goes something like this. There's three guys sitting in the front seat of a pickup, all dressed alike, cowboy hats, western shirts, the whole bit. The question is, can you tell which one of these three guys is the real cowboy just by looking at him? Well, actually, the answer is pretty easy. The real cowboy is the guy sitting in the middle because he doesn't have to get out and open any gates. Fences and gates are one of those necessary evils. You have to have them. They keep the cows in and safe. But with them comes a ton of maintenance. And if you want to get through them, you have to open gates. Somewhere along the line, an old rancher decided that he'd had enough of getting out of his pickup to open and close gates. And he invented the cattle guard. And for the most part, they work pretty good. The pipes in a cattle guard keep the cows from stepping over them. And unless you have a really energetic cow that's going to jump the whole thing, which happens, you are pretty safe to assume that your cows will stay put. And you can stay put in the truck and cruise right over. Cattle guards save you time and frozen fingers, so it makes sense to think about building one through one of our most active gates on the ranch. A gate we call the Red Gate. More of those imaginative names. This gate is driven through many times a day, and we access the cows from home through this gate for feeding, checking cows during calving, and in fact, it's the main access to the entire ranch for me. But a traditional cattle guard won't work here. First off, we run the risk of cows jumping it to get into our yard. Nice, yummy grass that I'm sure they'd love. Also, it's on a bit of a hill, so without leveling the ground to dig a pit for the cattle guard, there's no way to put one here. So, a different solution was required. And if you can't go through, you go under, which would be awesome. But that's not going to work here either. So, we're left with over. Luckily, I have a bunch of pipe that was left to us after the state pulled out a mess of abandoned methane wells. That's our materials. Then we add a welder, and we're in business. The basic plan is to build a ramp up and off the ground with bars, just like a cattle guard, allowing us to drive over and through a fence, bypassing the gate completely. The plan complete, and it's time to start cutting and welding, and cutting and welding, and cutting and welding and grinding, and soon, shapes start to form. Then we turn it over and weld some more, and soon it's time to test it, making sure it can support the weight of a 2,000 pound John Deere Gator. And it's a success, thankfully. Now we just cut a hole out of the fence, move a little bit of snow, and push our new ramp into place. A quick and easy access to the cows, making calving easier when we have to bring in a calf as we don't have to stop and open a gate, and making life easier all the way around. Ranching is hard enough. Why sweat the little stuff? Beef cattle production represents the largest single segment of American agriculture. In fact, the U.S. beef industry is made up of more than one million businesses, farms, and ranches. There are more than 800,000 ranchers and cattle producers in the United States. And the production of meat animals was responsible for over $100 billion in added value to the U.S. economy. Ranching is a family affair. 98% of U.S. farms and ranches are family owned. The typical herd size is about 40 head, but herds with more than 100 head of cattle produce most of the beef in the U.S. There are 98 million cows in the United States. Total beef production last year, 25 billion pounds of beef. And beef production has increased from about 400 pounds in the mid-60s per cow to 585 pounds, meaning more business opportunities for producers and cost savings for consumers. Careful, you might learn something. 
as we take a look at five things you may or may not know about cows. Babysitters. Cows use babysitters. In fact, usually one cow will get volunteered for this duty as moms go off and eat grass. It's not a bad gig, and they seem to rotate babysitters. Cows dig holes. Big ones. Mostly to lay in. But some say that cows could be seeking minerals to eat in the soil. Cows drop their babies on their heads. In fact, it's probably the first thing your mom is going to do to you as you're being born. Ouch. Stand up and lay down. Cows stand up and lay down about 14 times per day. No, I didn't count. But it is according to the new cow bit. That's what happens. And cow tipping. Real or fake? Sad to burst your bubble, but it's fake. Cows don't sleep standing up. And if you do find a cow that'll let you try, like Bambi here, she's going to brace herself. And according to the math, it could take up to six people to even overcome the force of her standing there. And I guarantee she's going to get bored and either kick you or walk away. So kids, don't bother trying. Well, here we are, back at the chicken house. A few weeks ago, I invited you to send me your questions, and we'll answer them in our videos. And I've received our first question after our baby chick video last week. Kristen from Washington State wanted to know more details about our chicken setup. So we head over to the chicken house for the grand tour. The chicken house itself is 24 feet wide by 24 feet long, giving the chickens about 575 square feet of living area. There are three entrances and exits, two for chickens and one for us lowly humans. One of the chicken doors leads to a 50 foot long by 16 foot wide chicken run. When the weather is bad or we know a predator is in the area, the chickens, ducks, and geese will only be allowed to go outside in the protection of the run. Metal chicken wire keeps them inside and the bad stuff out. The other chicken door leads to freedom. Most of the time, our birds are allowed to free range the ranch. It's pretty rare to see a chicken more than a couple hundred feet from the chicken house, but the ducks and geese will wander about a quarter of a mile. The chicken house itself was built by me. Standard 2x4 construction with a 2x6 insulated floor. Inside, it's divided into three sections. One whole side is the chicken side. It's roughly 10 feet by 24 feet long, giving them about 240 square feet. The general rule is that chickens need two to three square feet per chicken inside a chicken coop, so we could have up to a hundred chickens in here. And because the recommended number of nests is one per five birds, we have 16 nests available for the chickens to lay eggs in. On the other side of the chicken house, we have a smaller room that we can close off and use for housing younger birds as they get used to the chicken house and other chickens, and a small storage area, great for storing food, extra waterers, and feeders. Speaking of food and water, this chicken house is equipped with a low pressure watering system and an automatic waterer. And our feeder is something that I made that holds 200 pounds of chicken food at one time. I also have recently installed a heater that keeps the temperature of the chicken house above freezing during the winter. No, they don't have air conditioning, although I'm sure they would love it. Overall, our goal is to keep our chickens happy and healthy. A healthy chicken will lay two eggs every three days. And more eggs means more business. And more business means more chickens. It's kind of a vicious cycle. Some people call chickens the gateway farm animal. I can see why. Well, Kristen from Washington State, thanks for your question. And I hope that helps answer your question on our chicken setup. If you have any question you'd like answered by us, feel free to drop us a line at rwylife at gmail.com. That's it for this episode. Please subscribe, like, and comment. We answer them all because we really do appreciate your time and your watching of our little corner of the world. Next week, we get to take a look at the cooler side of the rancher's toolbox at some awesome new tech. So I hope you join us for that. As always, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Oh, almost. Uh -huh.